Good morning, afternoon, or whatever time it is for you scapers. I know it's been a long time since my first video, and that's mainly because I broke my computer, I had to build a new one, I started at the end of college, and I had to deal with some important health stuff, but I'm back now with a brand new PC, and just in time to talk about the new skill proposals for old school RuneScape. So, let's get into that. At the end of March, Jetix put out three skill proposals and did two blog posts and two live streams explaining details surrounding the new skill pitches, and as someone who's actually read the blog post, and went through the entirety of both live streams. I just wanted to go through all three of the skills and then at the end give my opinion on which I think is the best skill for old school RuneScape and then give my thoughts on the other two. But first, I wanted to talk about some important information about the skilling process. Uh, the first thing being that while there are three skills being pulled right now, there's a chance that none of them might make it. Yeah, one might make it to refinement this time, but there is a chance that it might not pass and could be relooked at. Uh, there could be more refining, more tuning, or or all three skills could be thrown out and we could get three whole new different skills. So this isn't the end of pulling a skill. This is the first attempt, but I do think that at least one of these have a pretty good chance of passing. If not, multiple of them have a good chance of being something that we see. Now, the other thing they brought up is that we are going to be only getting one skill, but there is a chance that if we like other skills, we can revisit them later. But only one skill is going to pass this time. Uh, another thing is that everything with these skills are subject to change. They're just pulling whether we like the concept not all the nitty gritty things. So everything about the skill is subject to change based on of our feedback and refinement. And also third, some of these skills are gonna sound more empty than others, and that's just because they want us to have the freedom to build up the skill with the team. They just wanted us to get the skills in our hand and then write out a few things and then discuss with us and build up that skill through a polling process so it's something that the community actually wants. Now with all that, in mind, let's get into the actual skills. Selling was a skill that was previously pulled back in 2015 with a yes vote of 67.9%, but now it's being reworked and resuggested with more fleshed out ideas. The idea behind sailing is that all the space that is filled with water on the map will now be filled up with different types of content. You'll be able to travel through the seas and encounter different types of quests, slayer activities, monsters, NPCs, skilling spots, and many different secrets and you can do this possibly with different types of boats how the skill works is that you go to a port you acquire a ship either by building one purchasing one or stealing one and you set sail to the sea to engage with all the activities i talked about be uh, before navigation is a key part of the skill jetix knows how important getting the feeling of sailing correct will be so they're trying out different types of movement such as click based movement keyboard input movement and navigation menus and they said that we would be able to try many different things in the beta for the skills so hopefully we'll be able to try each one of those methods and see what works best during refinement the navigation will heavily be focused on and they did confirm that the skill would come with a whole new updated ocean with deep waters coral reefs sea currents storms and other new content the current idea for active gameplay is that the majority of sailing xp would come from the activities that you're doing at sea with your ship some of the things they listed were deep sea fishing hunting sea creatures, delivering packages, and discovering new islands. The passive gameplay will still be there with things kind of smaller that grant a little bit of XP, such as keeping a captain's log or in engaging in random encounters. They also mentioned that the sea is alive and full of danger, so look out for bad weather, strange creatures, and pirates. Under the reward space, they say that the main motivation for the skill is getting access to a boat and being able to explore the ocean and engaging in a monumental amount of new content that can also expand into training methods, activities, and even mini games. We also will get some form of boat customization, which they compare to player owned houses. They also mention different types of boats that could be used for different types of purposes. They also mentioned that sailing will let you access a part of the game that has been previously blocked off, asking if you ever wondered what's beyond the little bit of coastline that you see from your favorite fishing spot. 
In the live stream, they did confirm that you can sell to other locations and ports and it can be used as an alternative form of traveling to different locations, but it will be slower than teleporting and other transportation methods because the main point is to sail the sea, not necessarily to travel to different points. They threw in several ideas for how storms can be used as barriers and how you can upgrade your ship to get through those different spots. They also talked about the engine work and how the engine team has greenlit everything they're talking about now and they were told that the engine time that's needed to make this skill is the amount of engine time that they'll get which is pretty reassuring. Shamanism is a skill that explores the magical powers of nature and allows you to perform rituals. It is both a mix of a gathering and a production skill and expands on the use of current items as well as expands the world by adding the spirit realm. The core gameplay loop involves foraging which is where you gather natural components such as plants and monsters to use. You also gather spiritual components which can be found in disturbed sites which are a connection between the spirit realm and Gilinor. Then you draw ritual circles which can be done anywhere in the world like lighting a campfire and creating a shamanic item which is done by combining your components in the ritual circle. You can create items like tikis, oils, and totems. This is where the most of your XP will come from in the skill. There will be new ways to gather components such as natural components coming from nature. You'll find nodes around like mushrooms, roots, barks, leaves, berries, and things of that nature. You will also be able to gather valuable materials from beasts. If you bring your carving knife with you, you can get components from your kills such as giant bone marrow, hellhound blood, giant frog spleens, and things of that sort. As said before, disturbed sites are where you will get the special nodes that give you spiritual components but there hasn't been any examples listed. The spirit realm will be another reality filled with spirits Shamans can harness power of the realm and use their abilities as well as use disturbed sites to cross over into the spirit realm where you are allowed to explore a whole new mysterious area. The spirit realm will be a mirror of Gilinor, but subtly different. Some of the suggestions are things like one door in, that's locked in Gilinor would be unlocked in the spirit realm. By jumping between these new paths, you can find a new way to navigate the world and find its secrets. They state that they're not sure what the spirit realm will actually look like, but they want to flesh that out with you guys in refinement. The reward for shamanism is the ability to create magical items at ritual circles like wards, oils, incense, salves, idols, relics, tikis, totems, and things of that nature. They don't exactly know what these items will help with yet because they want to discuss that in refinement, but oils can make tools better, relics can provide magical power, and they have a variety of other uses that they haven't quite narrowed down yet. There's also augmented equipment. With shamanism, they want you to be able to augment slash improve your gear. It could be as simple as a stat increase for armor, new damage types for weapons, or more efficient skill tools, but it's another thing that they want to flesh out in refinement. Taming is a skill that lets you discover new and existing creatures around the world and allows you to tame them into friendly companions. You can find a creature, befriend them, take care of them, train them, and then be able to take advantage of their unique abilities. The gameplay loop looks something like this. You find a creature you want in the world. You domesticate the creature, which is a process that will differ depending on the creature you want to tame. There are different foods, toys, and items that can be used for different creatures. Next, you would care for the companion, which is where the bulk of the XP comes from. Looking after your companion involves providing it with its favorite foods, building a new home for it, keeping them active, and having them accompany you on your journeys. Then you have training and leveling up your companion. To train your companion, you engage in fun activities that range from simple things like fetch to more dangerous things like going through dungeons. This will level up the companion and get you taming XP as well. The devs were pretty clear that this is not summoning, which as someone who really likes summoning, I can agree to. There aren't charms, there isn't creating pouches, and the way that you interact and keep your companions is completely different than the way that we interacted with summons. Now some of the content we can expect to come along with taming would be animal abilities, which are unique to the animal and as you level up your animal their abilities will be stronger while they help you with existing skills and combat they also might be able to help you access new areas track things down or find some treasures for you you also have new training activities to train your companion you'll have to do a variety of activities around the world which can range and depend on 
what type of companion you have. Some might like mazes or dungeons, and some might like playing fetch, and some might like obstacle courses. The reward of the skill would be the ability to have a unique interaction with old and new beasts slash animals around Gilinor. You also have an animal companion that you can care for and accompany on journeys, and then you also have new ways of training, traveling, and engaging with combat. Now is the time you've all been waiting for. What skill am I voting for? What skill do I think will lead old school RuneScape to greatness? What skill do I think should be the first ever skill to add onto old school RuneScape? Make history, pave the way for other skills. Well, the answer is... Sailing boys, I want to set sail with the homies. Ye landlubbers don't have shit on sailing, all right? I want to give I want to build my boat. I want to get on my boat. I want to go out to sea with the homies and I want to sail. I want to I want to get scurvy, all right? Listen, the masculine urge to sail has awoken into me. They've set a fire to my soul. I want to go out there with the boys with the eye patch and the hats, all right? Start investing now on the GE. Get those eye patches, get those hats because they're going to, the price is going to sail, all right? It's going to sail like this skill will, all right? But, but okay, but in all honesty, why am I choosing sailing? Why do I think it? I, I, I want to explain why. All right, you're probably wondering why sailing over one of the other skills. Now, the reason I think sailing is a perfect fit for the first skill in old school RuneScape is one, it's big, all right? It is a big skill. We have waited a long time that if it was something small, like let's say artisan, right? I mean, none of these three skills are small, but let's, I'm just throwing that out there as an example. If it was something small, it wouldn't be big enough. It wouldn't be hype enough. It wouldn't have lived up to everything that has been building up to get this new skill, all right? So since it's been so long, it has to be something that's big. It also has to be something that's different. A lot of people feel like a lot of skills, I wouldn't say overlap, but they're kind of similar in the gameplay loop. We need something that's new and different, something that attracts old uh, old players, right, into the game to come back and be like, hey, um, I wanna check out what RuneScape's doing now. Something that could be new for current active players of RuneScape, and then something that's new enough to bring in people from outside of RuneScape that may have never tried it and have been like, hmm, that sounds interesting. And I think sailing captures that. It's also a skill that expands so much in the game. It expands the world, it expands territory, it expands quests, it expands mini games, it even expands raids, because they were talking about doing an underwater raid of sailing passes. Um, it expands Slayer. Uh, they were talking about farming being out there at sea, farming coral. That is so... It, it touches every part of RuneScape while adding something big and new. It is also kind of a fulfillment of a dream that has been talked about in RuneScape for years. People have been always talking about sailing coming to RuneScape, and now this can complete that. That can fulfill that dream that RuneScape players have always had. And that's why I think it should be the first skill. It's something grand. It's something hype. It's something that can attract all types of players, something that has content for everybody in the game, and something that can continue to be expanded on. And for that reason, I'm voting sailing. I'm setting sail to the seven seas, all right? This is the year of pirates. Dolphin emulators coming to Steam. I got a Miu Mini in the mail the other day, and I am not, I am not subscribing to Netflix. We are, we are pirates now, boys. Seven seas all the way. Sea Shanty 3, all right? But now I'm going to explain my thoughts on the other skills. Shamanism, I think, is a great skill. It, I think it's going to be close. I think it's going to put up a fight with sailing. I do think sailing will take the win, but shamanism has a lot of really cool things that I think are interesting. I like the way that their augmentation of weapons from what they sound seems like it could be subtle enough to fit old school RuneScape without feeling like augmentation from invention. Um, when they were talking about oils improving tools, I was thinking, what if you dipped your soil, like you had a jug of oil, right? And you rubbed the oil on your sword and then you used a tinderbox on it. And now it 
does flame damage, which means you can kill ice giants faster. But the the downside to this is that instead of having food or potions as your um, in your inventory space, you have one tinder box and a jug of oil, and it's also temporary. I think that's a cool use of shamanism. I also like the idea of uh, totems and tiki's and being able to build things and craft things that connect you to nature. I also like that the spirit realm expands RuneScape in a way that we haven't had it expanded before. It sounds like a really cool expansion to the game. Now, I'm not too much of a fan of the word shamanism for the skill. I think uh, there was a few other names. They had spirit craft on there. That sounds awesome. They had um, animanism, I think it was called, or animancy. Um, and then they also had mysticism, which I think if we do get the skill, it should be renamed. I think it would make a perfect second skill in the game, though I will always say that summoning should be the second skill or dungeoneering. But shamanism, it seems loved by the community, and I think it adds a lot to the game in the way of expansion, crafting. It also allows you to use things that were previously... Um, I guess you would say not dead content, but less useful content like certain like monsters like lizards and shit can now be used in shamanism in a unique way. I just like what it explores in the game. Now taming. I saved taming for last for a reason. I do not like taming. I, I don't. Um, I do. I, I love sailing. I think it should be the skill. Shamanism, I would be okay with being a skill and I love it as well. Just not as much. You know, there's obviously a favorite child here. Now, the thing about taming is that I don't think it fits as a skill. Taming seems like an expansion of hunter. It sounds like, imagine like you're hunting something and you're like, man, this is a cute rabbit. This is a cute champa. This is a cute bird. I think you should be able to have a chance of trying to, like, if you, if you catch one, you should be able to try to tame it and be able to take care of it, name it. And I like the idea of building... Um, a little home for it. Maybe at your player-owned house, you keep a little habitat area for the new pet. I also like the idea of them following you around. I think it's cool. I like pets. I like it when they follow you around. I just think that having it as its own skill does not seem fun to train, does not seem... I guess like it expands the game in any like real or meaningful way. There's some ideas that they have in here from summoning, but I would just rather have summoning than taming. I think taming is cool for the animals we do have in the game, but as like an expansion to hunt. Like they don't have perks, they don't do anything weird or quirky. They're just a cosmetic pet that you can get from hunting. I think that would be a better way of approaching the skill without it seeming like a pain in the ass to train um if you do want things like um combat based pets and scaling based pets i think we should start looking and talking about a rework of summoning remember we can vote in exactly what we want a skill at, to be as a community we can go over the details of the balancing how it's trained how you approach it so a lot of people like summoning but there's a big amount of people that are like no summoning was too broken well we can rework it summoning doesn't have to be a copy and paste from runescape 3 to old school runescape it could be a brand new unique version of the skill in old school runescape so for that reason i'm out taming ain't it i'm sorry i do like the crocodile being like lassoed i do like the idea of having pets but it feels more like something that should just be pulled to be an expansion of hunter and a side little activity you can do rather than its whole skill and if we do want aspects of this as a skill we always can rework something, which I think would be more rewarding and a better fit to the game. But with all that said, you guys tell me, what skill are you guys voting for? What is the skill that you're voting for? What skill are you going to be okay with if it wins? And what skills do you not like and why? Uh, what skills were you hoping for that aren't on the poll? Were you hoping for dungeoneering? Were you hoping for archaeology, warding, artisan? Let me know. I want to know what the community thinks about this. Uh, the comment section is a good place for uh, discussions. So if you start commenting, I'll reply. We can have some great conversations about what skills to be added to uh, old school RuneScape. Hopefully this first one is good enough that we keep on getting them every year or so. But for now, I'm signing off. Peace out and uh, skill well.